guy comes out of the lesson pretending like he's making a phone call. He looks at me, walks for good like two seconds, comes back in the classroom, and I'm just like, you think I, you think I don't know what he just did there? Like he was trying to confirm if that was me, cause I was giving catfish. I'm not gonna lie to you. Them times I knew I was a catfish, right? So later on, I found out that um, he basically said that I appear slimmer on socials than in real life. Like I. The amount of times I've heard this particular complaint in the plus size community, it's, it's got to be more than a hundred times at this point. How many, why do I have to keep hearing this? Oh yeah, I don't know. Like, I mean, at the time, obviously when I uploaded these pictures, I didn't look, the, I mean, you're literally straight up admitting that you didn't even look like what you look like in real life on your profile pictures. Why would that ever, why, the fact that you know that shit was going to be an issue is actually insane to me, bro. Why would you set yourself up for failure so incredibly extreme? Can you imagine meeting up with a girl and literally looking at her and be like, uh, hold up. Let me look up my phone real quick to see what you, why do you look completely different? You, did you take these pictures from like five years ago? Who is this woman? This, is this, how is this you? This woman might as well be white. That's, I hear this so incredibly often dude and the fact that this woman can literally say i'm giving catfish is actually extraordinarily hilarious i don't know if you guys have ever watched the catfish bring back max right hashtag bring back max but the amount of times i've seen and you know the amount of times this has happened to me personally has been i think three times in my life probably not that much i mean listen it, it happens and it wasn't even that extreme most of the time with the exception of one time where i should have known because i was looking at a profile picture and it was just face pictures and I didn't think anything of it. I just kind of thought, oh, wow, she's really pretty. And then we met up and I thought, you, even in the face, you don't look as pretty as you did in these profile pictures. How many filters did you stack on top to ensure that you had the proper face that you needed to have on, on this profile picture? It's, it's actually extreme. And especially nowadays where we have in filters literally defining not only your face structure, but your body structure, hashtag Becky Jones. There are literally too many reasons for people to have inauthentic profile pictures nowadays and it only works in your detriment because are you never planning to meet up with anybody like is this really like that practical of a situation is that really the hill you want to die on and the fact that this girl is like straight out just saying like yeah i knew i was a catfish and you're gonna get mad at the guy for that uh, why would you ever get mad at the guy for that bro like you didn't show you that's false advertisement 101 you're literally admitting it too so it's just like why is this even an argument point? I don't know. He basically said that I appear slimmer on socials than in real life. Like, I'm giving catfish. You basically called me a catfish. The amount of violations that but I- But you just said that you were doing that though. I mean, you li didn't she just say like, I was giving catfish at the time? Isn't that exactly her words? It was me, cause I was giving catfish. I'm not gonna lie to you. Bro, I, I don't care if somebody, <laughs> so you're telling me the guy read it correctly? Like he literally saw you was like, nah, that ain't you, bro. That's crazy. That's a major catfish. You might as well be a man at this point. That's, it, you You self-admitted that. So why, why are you upset that the guy accurately described who you were? It kind of sounds like he was right. <laughs> Am I wrong? What, what is the purpose of you even making this video? See, them times I knew I was a catfish, right? So later on, I found out that um, he basically said that I appear slimmer on socials than in real life. It's just like, embarrassing. I'm giving catfish. You it's, it's so embarrassing to even make a video like this, bro. Like, yeah, I was lying. Yeah, I did kind of exaggerate what my pictures look like. Them shits were kind of filtered through a couple different apps. I will give you that. That beauty filter was literally working OD. Uh, but, you know, he did say I was giving catfish, which is t terrible. I can't believe he would say that. Basically, called me a catfish. The amount of violations that I used to get because I wasn't laying and I was big and I was this and that. I found out that's what he said. And funny enough, the way I found out, this is what I'm saying, girls are scary because the way I found out was actually through a female making up a lie about me. She just wanted these lots to chat shit about me. Growing up fat. Okay, I just want to know, like, did you stop? Hopefully, like, you learned from the mistake. Like, it, was that not the purpose of that video, dude? That you literally catfished the dude on a social media app and you met up with him and it turns out that you look nothing like that person that was in that social... Why does it matter if girls lied about that? Uh, but he was right, wasn't he? Okay, whatever, bro. I don't know, man. It's hard, but two things I... She just wanted these lots to chat. By the way, those eyebrows are atrocious, dude. Like, you gotta make them shits thicker, bro. Draw them on a little bit more correct. Am I wrong, dude? Shit, bro. Them shits are shiny. Growing up fat is hard. Dude. 
caked, bro. I don't know whose face that is, but it's definitely not yours. But two things I appreciate about growing up as a plus size girl, dude. now that I'm 28 years old, number one- You are not 28 years old, dude. Don't do me like that, dude. Don't ever, don't ever in your entire life ever tell me you're 28 years old, bro. You're somebody's auntie, bro. Don't lie to me, dude. You're not 40? All right, dude. And this is one, this is one another reason, dude. Like, I'm not here to be mean or offensive in any way. I genuinely thought this woman was like 41, 42 years old. I thought she had a family or something like that. I don't know. It's just the amount of times I see plus size people and they go, I'm like 10 years older than you think I am. I always go, this is insane. Like, like you guys are literally the, the exact reason why you shouldn't be eating the, to the extent that you are you guys look like 10 years older guaranteed than any age that you actually are That's a problem. You guys need to address that shit. Stop doing this shit to yourself. You are what you eat Personified dude. Jesus Christ Two things I appreciate about growing up as a plus-size girl now that I'm 28 years old she should never Number one that. when it came to liking boys. I really had to take my time I had to take my time because I had to determine does he really like me for me or what he think he can get me that i feel like a lot of girls have to deal with this just baseline dude and i think it's probably a little bit more exaggerated for regular or more attractive women because it's like hyper emphasized most guys are just with you to have sex or does this guy genuinely want to be around me i i met so many women that have to ask that question and ascertain the truth so many times and it's not always going to be obvious it's not always going to be hey do you like me do you like me for me or do you just want to smell my vagina most guys are going to go what what are you talking about? Of course I love you, babe. What? Dude, like, yeah, of course I like you for you. But, like, if your vagina was in my face right now, I mean, yeah, I would love it. Yeah, of course. Like, you don't know. And the same thing could be extended to a, a lot of different areas in life. I met a lot of women personally that have told me that they don't know whether or not they got the job because they were qualified for the position or whether or not they got that job because they were very attractive and that's gotta suck because i mean it might be a good thing that you got the job because you're attractive but is that really the, the qualification that you wanted on that you know you you went through all that work and all that time and only to get the job because you're pretty that's gotta be terrible but then again there are people in this life that are so ugly that can't even operate in society so it's like a double-edged sword it's a good thing it's also a bad thing you also have to deal with the tremendous amount of harassment you also have to deal with all of the the major major like dudes on the street that are just trying to solicit sex from you and things such and so forth so you have all of that but in the world we live in i've always said this dude from the time that a woman even hit hit puberty she has always had as much penis as she's ever wanted i feel like a lot of dudes don't realize this i hear a lot of dudes nowadays say like man online dating ruin relationships man women could just go and go on social media dog and they just get whatever girl they want whatever guy they want and i'm just saying like dude women have never had a hard time getting dick like isn't that's never been an issue for women since the dawn of existence men have been slinging dick to anyone and anything they could possibly throw it in between so if you're sitting here and you're upset that girls can get options on social media. Let me tell you something. 10 years ago, 15 years ago, a girl walking outside could get any dick that she wanted. It wasn't, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't hard. It was never going to be hard. It's never, it never has been hard. It's just a little bit easier, I suppose, because there's another outlet. But that doesn't change the fact that it's always been easy. I guess they increased the easiness thing from like super ridiculously easy to super omega ridiculously easy. So, hey, bro, it is what it is. Um, but that doesn't mean that. Uh, you could just get whatever relationship. That's just uh, a key to having sex, which in my opinion is not really an accomplishment, especially if dudes are literally just throwing penis around like uh, they have no choice. Like most dudes are willing to have sex with like conditioner bottles or like watermelons or, you know, uh, chocolate pie uh, rather than, you know, actually meeting a woman. So a vagina is always going to be like a step up above that. You know, all those false allegations they used to start about plus size girls that we was easy. This is prideful pee. I really don't think that many people actually thought that. I think for a, what happened for a really long time, and I'm going to actually keep this a solid buck with you. Uh, most of the time when you're very, very fat, I don't know if you guys have ever watched plus size or obesity pornography, which I have. I've consumed a fair bit of it just for the educational value behind it, given what we're doing here on this channel. It's not very fun to watch. Most of the time, you don't even know if it's actually lesbian, gay. It could be anything, to be, to be honest. Like, most of the stuff is... So incredibly ambiguous, your eyes cannot discern what is going on because there's so much flesh. There's so much extra body proportions that you're literally watching and you're going, I think this is just uncomfortable. I think like if you just took two love seats and just stacked them on top of each other, I would get more of an erection than I would have if I just watched two people that were very, very overweight have sex. So I never thought it was actually ever true. 
that plus size people were very good at sex. At least I don't think men had that particular opinion. I think it was just mainly women, which by the way, where's the equality? You know what I'm talking about? Where's the equality on that? And by the way, I don't know if you've ever realized this, but when you're two, three, four, 500 pounds, bro, um, you can't wash appropriately. Your penis and or vaginal uh, area will be 100% compelled by the stench or the, sten the, the stenchiness of not washing properly. So I don't think it would even be something I would ever want to do in general. Um, there might be a case for like oral sex. I don't know if that's true either. I've never been performed fellatio and you can't really judge the quality on somebody else's head giving ability by just watching a video. That's not like, I know there are a lot of people that like to make noises and like roll their eyes in the back of their head. I don't believe any of that shit. Most of the time that shit's all for a facade. They're just doing it to increase the production value of whatever you're watching. So I'm going to call cap on the being plus size and then being really, really good at sex. That's obviously not true. And then also for when it comes to uh, receiving oral, what, what, what is it? Um, fellatioing. I don't know. Somebody can enlighten me down below, but I'm pretty sure that's also not true. And by the way, if you were ever to um, perform fellatio on a woman and she has a lot of gut capacity, I don't know if you guys are just okay with living in an environment like that, like a greenhouse down there. Uh, you do realize that you're not going to be able to look up, right? Like there's going to be a gut literally on your head the entire time. So I don't know. Like I've had sex with women before. I know it's crazy. And when you're under the covers, it's like a swamp because there's so much going on down there. Can you imagine having that occur 24 seven all the time? I'm just saying, dude, I don't know. Somebody can let me know down below if they've ever done that, but I've never done it and I don't plan on ever doing it. It sounds absolutely deplorable. Ain't nothing easy about this. Two, because I did have to take my time getting to know these boys, because I did have to really decipher what is a real like and what is a lot of lust, I fortunately, unfortunately, sometimes fortunately, I don't know, I'm still working it out, wasn't able to just fall for what a man said or what he had. I never had the privilege of just shutting the fuck up and getting my bills paid, so that meant Big Mama had to work hard and make sure she could get it on her own. Well, I mean, that's what you should be doing in general. I don't think it's like a good idea to rely on anybody for money or bills or anything like that. So, I mean, I see what she's saying, but I think this is just like what everybody should be doing in general. I don't think this is like a plus size girly thing. Uh, most dudes will 100% lie to you just to smell your vagina. That's a factual statement. I don't know what to tell you about that. Like, I know there are a lot of, like, the amount of times I've talked to girls and they go, oh, I'm going to go over to this guy's house. And I go, uh, why would you do that? And they go, well, um, I told him before that I had a boyfriend or I told him that we're not having sex. And a lot of times guys don't really register uh, when a girl says we're not going to have sex. A lot of guys think you're just saying that just to make it seem like you have a get out of jail free card. Uh, of not being a slut at the time or a slut. So that way you you can just basically cop like, oh yeah, no, like even though we're having sex, just remember like this wasn't my main intention. Things just changed. A lot of guys just kind of think that it's going to happen regardless or if they play the right cards, they can still do it. Um, or if you tell them, hey, I have a boyfriend, that's not going to stop them either. We're literally talking about guys that have slid meat right into mayonnaise jars. Like, are you really thinking that that's going to stop these dudes? Like, granted, obviously, no means no. But you know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of guys don't really care about that. They're going to make a lot of sexual innuendos, a lot of sexual comments. They're going to make moves. It, it is what it is, okay? And by the way, uh, going over to a guy's house is never a good thing to be, to be doing in general unless he's, like, a really, really good friend and or he's gay. But a lot of gay men nowadays are not actually gay. A lot of gay men nowadays have had sex with more women than straight men, crazy enough. So I don't know. Leave it up to you guys. But if I'm being honest with you for a second, if a guy goes, hey, let's can you come over and chill at my house? His penis is erect. His penis is trying to be moisturized. And he's thinking that you look like a good lotion bottle, okay? Like an, an organic lotion bottle. So um, if you're a woman, make sure you discern correctly. A lot of guys will 100% not care if you said you were not going to have sex or uh, you have a boyfriend. None of that really matters to them. And because of that, now at 28, while a man being a financial provider is important, more so... Okay, I'm. it's fine to me if you want to date a guy that is a financial provider as long as like that if that's what you want i'm never gonna hate on that it's fine if that's what you want to do but in today's world i just really think it's more appropriate to have dual income given the fact that men and women are both making 50 percent of the income here in america at least so given the fact that this is a westernized country i'm totally fine if you want a traditional man a guy that's going to take care of you a guy that's going to work the job a guy that's going to be doing those long hours while you stay at home and do that stuff i have no problem with women doing that if you can find a guy that's going to facilitate that for you and you don't mind him literally working all the time and you sit home and do nothing well i mean not nothing but you know what i'm saying like you're he's going to be doing all the work well you're going to be at home and you're going to be taking care of the house family and all this other stuff which is fine by the way if that's what you want to do i have no problem with that um 
I always ask though, uh, are you okay with like not having time with the guy? Cause he, like, if he's making a lot of money, upwards of a hundred K, are you just okay with this guy just working all the time? And like, you're just gonna like presumably take care of the kids and do all the like housework and stuff like that. Like, is that fine for you? If that's fine for you, then go ahead and do it. I have no problem with that. I have no quarrel with that. But I would never prescribe that to the majority of people because the majority of people cannot get that. The majority of people are going to have to date men and or women that are also working jobs, which is fine, by the way. I know that maybe 50, 60, 70 years ago, that was okay to do. But then back then, things were different. Women literally physically could not work. I mean, like, it was impossible for them under the law. So in these particular scenarios, I would never prescribe because it's just not... It's not accurate anymore. Most people are working. Most people make income. And dual income is probably really necessary given the increased cost of literally everything. So I would never tell somebody to try to do that. If you want to do that and you can get it and you can facilitate it, fine. But if you are trying to bank on that, I would never do that. So he needs to be able to take care of himself. Yeah, I want him to be able to do something over here, but please be able to take care of yourself and a little bit more. So you True, like wash yourself. A lot of guys don't even wash their butt cheeks because they're afraid that it might be gay to do that. So I definitely agree that dudes should be putting on deodorant. Dudes should be washing butt cheeks. And dudes should also know how to do dishes. Too many guys nowadays have absolutely no idea how to cook and clean. And it's actually insane. Like going over to a guy's house and they go, hey man, do you want something to eat? And you're thinking, sure, bro, what do you got? And he's like, yeah, chicken nuggets, bro, hot pockets. And you're looking... Dude, is there nothing else in this house? Like, how do you have a whole refrigerator and an oven that hasn't been used in eight months because this air fryer has been working at 150% capacity? Like, it's just crazy how many times I've, I've had that happen to me. Comfortable. Broke men are me. And because of that, I get to think beyond just if he's a financial provider. I need more than that. I uh, you don't think more women need more than that? What is this, like ideology that you're prescribing to most women right now do you think most women are just only trying to find men that have money i'm pretty sure most women especially in the modern age are looking for more than just money i mean most women make enough money to support themselves therefore they're probably okay with the bare minimum from a guy in sense of like money that they're making most women are looking for other things the most women that i talk to will sit there and go i just need him to be emotionally mature i want to be able to have a conversation with him i want to be able to be like actually sit down and sort through my emotions and then also I, like he's not just a brick i want a guy that knows how to like do household chores i want a guy like most of this stuff is going to be things that women are looking for not just money i mean money's important don't get me wrong if you're making 20k and you're living in your mom's basement yes 100 make more money but most of the time like women are already weeding those guys out they're looking for guys that are making average money and have good values I take care of a lot of stuff on my own every single day from most women do so it's like i don't know why she's flexing about this as if it's like some kind of accomplishment this is most women by the way if you're doing this already good job it's fantastic but most people don't have to actually brag about the fact that they're doing what they already need to do bills to the mental load to so many other things where's his head at where's his heart at where's that emotional intelligence i really hate that so many people will literally say the base the most basic shit and somehow they think they're preaching somehow they think they ate like you're not saying anything most women do want to date men that make an average income or more and are good people to talk to and communicate with and have other skills uh duh duh i'm not saying all but i will say a lot of the girls are poor the economy's hard i understand but please do not be so hell bent on you being able to financially be taken care of that you X out all the other boxes and you go with the highest bidder. You may think you're winning, but you're going to pay somehow, some way. Whether it's true. Uh, a lot of people that I meet that want to date these kind of dudes that have this kind of income, like high, very high incomes. This guy's working a lot, like all day, every day for hours on end. And he's coming home and he's maybe giving you a little bit of time, but odds are because he's worked all day he's probably dusty by the end of that day so i mean it's fine like i said earlier if you want to put up with that and that's what you want to do a lot of people i feel like don't actually understand what they're putting themselves in what kind of box they're putting themselves in um when they date guys like this they're working all the time and if you're okay with that you're okay with that but most people are not okay with that whether it's with your mental or with your physical. Some of the comments that Monet and Jalen are receiving are just nasty. How do y'all say y'all care about her and he's trying to ruin her moment when that podcast episode was old and y'all are the ones under her comments of her upcoming fragrance launch? Ooh, provider, ooh, provider being I, I have no idea what this context is. Funny and messy. Y'all aren't a real community. I don't feel like it's a secret that Monet's probably pulling in way more money than Jalen is. One, women make way more money in the influencer industry than men do anyways. That's true. Uh, being a social media influencer as a woman is significantly easier compared to men. And I think the predominant reason for that is because most women are way more social than men. 
Um, women literally speak double the amount of words that men do in a day. Maybe not for me. I know I speak a lot, but I'm different, right? I'm just special, right? But anyway, so yes, it's true. Um, it's just different though, because like women will choose to emphasize themselves in certain areas where men have to choose to emphasize themselves in other areas. And usually the overlap is few and far between. Like women predominantly will, if we're talking about social media in general, are usually focusing on maybe a little bit more, you know, a little bit more sexual content. That's also as big, that's a giant area that women can usually dominate. Uh, men can't, men just literally can't. Like there's no value in it. Nobody's like tuning in to a stream to watch a streamer that's a dude that's 250 and is gonna like get up one day and see his butt cheeks and go, <gasps> nobody's doing that. So like, but there are plenty of men out there that will literally facilitate your life because your butt cheeks are kind of a little bit delectable and they'll literally throw money at you. And that's okay. Um, most of the time when women are really, really successful, it is off the backs of men, which is great by the way. I have no problem with men giving women copious amounts of money to facilitate your lifestyle, it's not your fault, it's the men. You're just choosing to put yourself in a bracket that's going to emphasize that. I have no problem with that, by the way. There's a reason why porn exists, there's a reason why uh, prostitution exists, and women dominate those markets, it is what it is. Of course, women are also doing other things on social media too, like modeling and other things like that, or even just having talking careers. Yes, these women are way better at talking than men, usually. So I will concede that point 100%, women are better at social media than men. It's easier to appeal to a bunch of women. But okay. I think I... Okay. I don't... Okay. Maybe I just didn't know what she was talking about. Maybe I'm thinking about it from a different angle. Usually, if you're talking about women online, a lot of their fan base will be men because men are the primary users on the internet, especially on different social media platforms. Here on YouTube, I think men dominate it. Maybe it's not the same on other social media platforms. But like on Twitch, for instance, a lot of the big streamers will have a lot of male audiences. So I don't know what she means by social media then. Maybe like Instagram, but then again, like does anybody really think of Instagram as like big social media? What do you even do on Instagram? Like post a picture of yourself like every month? Maybe I just don't know what I'm talking about, dude. But anyway. I can only imagine their financial breakdown behind the scenes, who they take care of, who they also provide for besides themselves and besides one another. I mean, the switch up is so real. Y'all just was ooh and eyeing over everything the man did. Not all of a sudden the girl's in danger. I hope y'all are managing y'all territory, aka y'all home and y'all porch, just the way y'all want the influencers to. You know what? We're all collectively agreeing that the beauty standards for women have gotten ridiculous, ridiculous. Bro, not ridiculous enough, dude. I'm just so sick of this woman, dude, talking about the beauty standards for women and having the most obvious lace front I've ever seen in my life. I'm just so sick of this shit, bro. For years, this woman, dude, what do you buy the wig and just put it on your head? There is a technique to it, okay? You gotta pluck, you gotta cut, there's a gluing process, okay? There's a hot glue gun that you gotta like fucking spray on your head. I just shouldn't be the person. I really just shouldn't be the individual that has to sit here and tell people about what they gotta do for their wigs. I shouldn't have to notice, right? But it just so happens that I'm a snow bunny, so I, like, I've been around a lot of black girls and wig installations and things like that. I shouldn't have to know this stuff, but I do. And you know what? A lot of people think I'm gay because of it, but I'm not gay. I just date women that have wigs, okay? And I guess a lot of dudes don't even know that women wear wigs. Like, I was talking to my guy friend the other day, and I was like, oh, yeah, bro. I remember I was dating this girl and she had put on this wig and she was like, what do you mean a wig? And I was like, yeah, she put on a wig. Like she put on, she had like four of them. And he was like, well, wait, what do you mean? Like wigs, women just put on wigs? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, what do you mean? When did they start doing that? I was like, I don't know, like forever? Like women just kind of do that, dude. I don't fucking know. But a lot of dudes, a lot of dudes have no idea that women put on wigs. So there's that. But this woman's wig is too obvious, bro. Look, I just, can we just try a little harder? It's too thick. It's way too thick at the top. Got to pluck a little bit. Got to make it look a little organic. The hairs don't even match. It's just like, whatever, bro. It's just like, it's just like she just went on Amazon and looked up like good wig and then bought that and just like right on her head, dude. Reduce forehead by 40%. You know, obviously it's capitalism. But also okay. Oh, look, I, anytime I, why is it capitalism? What are you talking about? What I have to, so like. If you're sitting here and you're telling me the reason why the female beauty standard has increased over the past, let's say 10 years, is because of capitalism, you're fucking retarded. Because for all of time, the beauty standard for women has always been outrageously large compared to the beauty standard for men. Because obviously, men and women are doing two different things and they're appealing to different markets. So like, it just depends on what you're looking at. I'm sure you can attribute some of the growth to capitalism, but would you ever contribute the majority of growth to capitalism? I don't think so. We live in a social media age, so 
I would probably go as far as to say the reason why the, the beauty standard for women has increased so drastically is because of social media, because we emphasize certain things and we show ourselves off more than we ever have ever before. And we're showing ourselves off to way more people than we ever before. So, I mean, sure. You can go ahead and say capitalism, but even in countries where, for instance, uh, social media is like, even in countries where like uh, capitalism is not paramount, their beauty standards are still rising like crazy. So I don't even know why you would ever go to capitalism. I hate when people just go capitalism bad. Therefore, that's the reason. It's just, it's such a cop out. Like you can just tell this woman's never thought about it. Gotten ridiculous, ridiculous. You know, obviously it's capitalism. But also these men aren't used to seeing this many bad bitches. And social media means they can see bad bitches all the time. So that also hiked up the standards. Sure. Sure. But most men are not like, okay. Generally speaking, most men are not trying to date nines and tens or bad bitches, which was what I would consider nines and tens, like bad bitches, whatever. Uh, most men are just trying to go for like average women or like normal normal women. Like it's very rare to ever find a dude dating a woman that's like a nine or a ten. Those those don't even exist. Like women that are nines and tens are only nines and tens for like ten or fifteen minutes, you know. Then the heat hits. So you got that. So, I mean, I see what you're saying, like it's changing the dynamics and it's also, it is true to a certain degree in the same way that for instance, a lot of people have a skewed idea of what sex is because you've been watching pornography from a very young age and somehow you think like, you know, slamming a woman's mouth open with your penis is like what she actually wants. In reality, it's obviously uncomfortable as fuck to have that be done to you. But because you've been watching porn for so long, you just kind of think this is what it should be. It's obviously not, but there is, it's, it's a little true it's sort of kind of true. It's just such an off-putting way of looking at it. It's like a diminishing way of looking at it. But also, this is my question. Like, how come the men are still looking the same? Because men's... Men... Okay, it's... If you think that men have not improved physically in the last few years or men are not held up to a different standard compared to the standard that they were held up to 10 years ago, you're dumb. Men beauty standard, male, male beauty standards have definitely gone up. They may not have gone up in the same way that they have for women, but that's only because women have always been predominantly, women have predominantly always been judged based off physical appearance. Therefore, that's going to be hyper emphasized for women. It's just kind of like the case of you only looking at what you know for a fact so like she can only externalize the way she's thinking about it because that's all she knows she's not willing to look outside herself and and then look like it's basically like thinking you know when you're in a, a relationship right it's very easy to go this is the things that i want for the partner that i'm going to be with i want him to have a car i want him to be six figures i want him to be six feet i want him to be this and then you project that upon what that other person wants Obviously, that's not the same. That other person is going to want different things from a woman, right? So naturally, it's the same thing here. When she says, how come women's beauty standards have gone up so drastically, but men have stayed relatively the same? It's because you're not looking at where men have improved in the ways that society wants them to improve, okay? So like society wanted women to improve physically. Therefore, that's what we're seeing. And men have not pr improved physically in the terms of like the same area because that's not exactly where men are ever been emphasized men have never been looked at as good looking people they have they've, they've they've increased in other areas so like maybe computer science or like technical skills and things such and so forth like how many dudes do you know nowadays that are like really good at like you know building pcs or like staying inside all day and hyper focusing on one particular thing or like video gaming's all day and shit like that like it just depends on where you're looking. Like women are judged predominantly based off their physical appearance. Men are not. So like, I see what you're saying, but it's not the same. Like if I'm going to date a woman, everybody knows that men are predominantly looking for physical features. Everybody knows that, but women are not. Women are not looking for guys that are really, really attractive. They're looking for a guy that is capable, a guy that has, that's mature, a guy that's funny, a guy that makes money, a guy that like women are looking for more secondary features where men are really predominantly looking for physical features. So like, it's just, she's not wrong, but it's also the wrong question to be asking. It's a stupid question because it's like, everybody knows why. So anyway. You know what I'm saying? No. Like, I've gone through a transformation, and men have stopped, you know, trying to unalive me because they think I'm ugly. But it's like, at the same time, the men I attract are just... You know what I'm saying? So you think you're... Because you're way more attractive now, that means that you deserve a really attractive dude? I just don't think that you have the correct standards, bro. Because dudes... you If you want a really, really hot guy, that's 
fine, but like most dudes in general, in my opinion, are just a really ugly women. So it's okay if you want to date a really like pretty boy. I'm sure that's like there, but you also have to understand that like a lot of those dudes are, um, I'm not going to say dumb. I'm not going to say stupid because like that's, that would be dumb for me to say, but you have to at least know what you're going into. Like a lot of those guys are maybe doing things that you probably don't want them to do. It's, it's just like, I'm not saying you can't get it, but it's just like, why are you looking at that when you could be getting other things too, right? I don't know, dude. Whatever she wants to do, but it's a really, really bad way of looking at it. Basically at the same level as, you know, before the transformation. And that's because these beauty standards have been up. And honestly, I'm not sweating it because, you know, I don't want a man attached to me. That's a lot of responsibility. Okay, so what's the... Per what is the purpose of making this video if you're sitting here going, I got pretty, I'm looking good, men are looking busted, but you know what? It's all right because I don't want to date anyway. What the fuck is the point then? This just, this just kind of sounds like I want this job really, really bad. I know you're firing me, but I quit. Like, what are you talking about? Why are you even here then? What the fuck is the nature of this video if you're going to sit here and complain about this shit and then at the end of it go, JK, I don't want to date anybody anyway. And, um... I don't be responsible, you know? True. That's like having a kid. I don't I don't know if it's like having a kid. I don't know about that. I don't think you have you ever been around kids? It's obvious you think a relationship is like having a kid? Uh maybe you're just in the wrong relationships. This woman sounds like she's walking red flags, bro. It sounds like she has an absolutely no dating experience at all. I don't think you've ever been in a relationship if you think that being in a relationship is like having a kid. There might be some like overlap. Maybe, like, you have to be more responsible. Like, maybe you have to, you know, incentivize the other person a little bit. But I would never, I would never in my wildest dreams ever go, this relationship is like having a child. I would, I don't know. Like, maybe, like, your girlfriend is hungry, so you get her food. Like, maybe, I guess. Like, I don't know, bro. It's such a weird way of looking at it. I'm not doing that. But it's like, I just want to know when men's beauty standards will go up. They're not going, well... You, I just don't, this woman is not looking at it in the correct way, dude. Men have gone up in particular areas, but you know what? In, in very general terms, like men have, men are failing across the board, dude. It's really sad. To, I don't want to go into this whole thing, but men are failing across the board in a lot of different areas. A lot of dudes are really, really antisocial nowadays. A lot of dudes have absolutely no friends. A lot of dudes like do the absolute bare minimum. I see what she's talking about, but men have never been the predominant people for physical appearance. That's just weird. Like women have because women have features that can be accentuated in beautiful ways, right? I'm not saying men don't either, but it's almost never been the incentivizing factor. So it's, you can go ahead. Like this just sounds like a you problem. Most women want to date a guy that's like average and average looking and have good traits on the side. I've even met women that have dated dudes that look like threes, but he's funny and he's clever and he's really good in conversation. He makes a bunch of money and he's very good around my family and he's great with children and he has a dog and he's awesome to be around. Like that stuff's like really important for women. And I'm not saying that men don't have these same flavors for intelligence and, uh, you know, women that are really, really funny and things like that. Usually that comes secondary for men though. Like usually men want the looks first and the secondary features come second. Because y'all still out here not washing your ass on a regular basis. That is true. This is a fact. She's actually right about this. Everything else up to this point has like been pretty incorrect, but this is actually really, really correct. I know so many men that think it's gay to wash their ass. I'm not even joking. A lot, of, a lot of black guys. No, I soak my kitty cat in herbs several times a week. Why? Is, uh, what do you mean soak it? How do you do that? Isn't it flat? Wait, how do you soak like in a bowl? How do you do that? Because I can soak, I could soak my meat in a bowl because I could just take it and just, you know, plop it into the bowl. But like your vagina, like aren't vaginas like flat? Like, I mean, I guess they do this, but like they, they're like flat. Like, what do you mean you soak it? With like a hose? Like, I, I don't know. I don't know, bro. Whatever. So I just, I just want the playing field to be leveled. Or well, it, listen, I don't think anybody can really keep up with that if you're soaking your flat vagina. I don't even know how a guy would even compete with that. Like, I don't, I, I, it sounds like unrealistic standards on that, dude. Like, oh, I soak my vagina, so I need a guy that, I don't know, like, washes his dick with Tide Pods. Like, well, I don't know what you even want at that point. What am I supposed to fucking do? Like, well, I, I just don't understand the correlation there. Like, oh, you know, you guys got to level up because guess what? I soak my vagina. Oh, shit. Okay, well, what the fuck do I do now? I guess, like, go to the fucking hills in, like, Taiwan and try to, like, learn from some, like, 
monk somewhere on how to properly cleanse my meat from like the soul of my body. I don't, what am I supposed to do? I don't fucking know. Or else, you know, it's lifelong celibacy out here. If you're trying to get a millionaire, most of the time they're not going to be dating a certain size woman. So you got to understand that first and foremost. Some men will date you, but they won't commit to you because they're holding out for better. You got to understand that. You can't get disappointed and think that something is wrong. It's just how guys are. Is she ha she have a filter on, right? This is like a mean filter action right now. I, I, her mouth is barely moving for the words that she's expelling. So this this is 100% a filter, right? Okay, anyway. Yeah, she's, I guess, sort of kind of right. I mean, in a very exaggerated way. Uh, a lot of dudes won't take you serious if you're very overweight. Because why would I do that when you're fat? And a lot of people have this idea of... Even though I'm fat, I'm still very desirable because I'm funny, I'm all this talented and stuff like that. When, yes, that's great. I'm happy that you have all these character traits. But if you're fat, that's going to negatively affect your dating, like man or woman, across the board. So, I mean, to a, to a lesser degree for men, but definitely it's going to negatively affect you. Okay, that's just how they are. Like a woman, as long as you got money, it doesn't matter. I, like for me, I'll, I'll date you fat, skinny, tall, short. As long as you have some money, that's all I really it's, it's like on the uh, very extremes like most people are not like this like most people are dating um their averages like most people are dating people that are in their schools like for instance if you're going to college you're probably dating somebody that's in college like in the same classes as you if you're working with somebody you're probably dating somebody that works in the same office as you like most people are dating right across from them and that's fine like most people are you know dating what they can get and most of the time what they can get is usually somebody right next to them um on the extreme ends you might find like very 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 you know high earning men dating women that are like fucking i don't know like 21 i guess um you know like the starbucks barista meme or whatever this does happen but this is a very extreme thing like this is not happening usually and usually what happens is people will focus on the extremes and think it's the norms when in reality the norms are the norms and the extremes are the extremes like it's not happening directly right like all the time okay i might draw the line with the bad teeth but that's i kind of agree with that dude um i think bad teeth are bad teeth bro don't don't do that dude uh get rid of your get rid of your bad teeth get good teeth that's it because people with money can get that fixed. But men aren't like that because a woman's looks are basically equivalent to a man's wealth. So put yourself first and I guarantee you a year from now, you're like- It's just like, sometimes people gotta look at what's being incentivized more, okay? So like men do care about a woman's looks more than a woman cares about a man's looks. That's a fact, 100%. I mean, if anybody disagrees with that, I don't know what to tell you. Like you're ignoring reality if that's the case. It just depends on what degree to which these things are going to be judged. Like, most men are okay dating most women. And I feel like that might be a little bit less true for women. Like, most women are probably not okay with dating most men. That That's only because most women want to date the extremes. And men usually want to date the extremes too, but it's usually in a very different way. So, men want to date very pretty women. And usually, average women are very pretty. So, you'll tend to see men go for that. Like, it's whatever. But most women are not really looking for men that are pretty. They're mainly looking for things that are more extreme. So like you'll see women that are dating guys that have more money or maybe they're really funny or they have a high uh, ceiling, if that makes any sense. It's just, it just depends. Like this is a very extreme view of how all this works. Like most of the time, it's most people are gonna be dating people that are on their level. Life's gonna be improved a lot. Just start doing it. Who cares what people think? Who cares what, how people start hating on you? And one year from now, you won't even care about those people. You're gonna be so happy you did what you did, that you made a change, a positive change for yourself, for your life, that you won't even remember the bad thing. Here are some things that I am not allowed to do as a fat. I mean, take that with a grain of salt. Technically, I can do any of these things. This is just how I feel. You'll, you'll, you'll just get it. I feel like I'm not allowed to be loud or too much. I would love to be like, a lot of this is just like insecurities or whatever, and that might play a part in it. But for sure, I just feel like as a fat person, people have less tolerance for you. I, do you know what I mean? I don't want anybody that's too loud or too much. You're just acting extra for no reason. Like it may be if it's, maybe it's okay and controlled scenarios. Like if we're at the house or whatever, but out in public, it's always gonna be bad. I prefer to have somebody that's more grounded in reality rather than somebody that's going to 
like expel a lot of like beliefs or act in a particular way out in public i personally don't like that and i don't think many other people like it either especially like if you're mature like that's probably something you're more okay with when you're younger but as you get older it just becomes really really taxing if you take up too much space you're too loud then you're just really annoying because you're fat okay i see what you're saying like because you're fat you don't have the same experience because because you're fat, you're already working from an unprivileged position, meaning like you're not afforded the same type of disqualifications that another person would in the same way. Like, for instance, oh, she's really loud. She's really extra, but she's pretty. So it's OK. But in your scenario, it would be, oh, my God, this girl's like loud and she's extra and she's fat. Oh, my God, dude. Like, can you believe all this shit? Like they're bad character traits, but you're also stacking on top of another ginormous bad character straight so that means that like you're already like you don't have the room that another girl would i see if you are too funny i feel like you're trying to part but then also they want you to be funny because all fat people have to be funny which i don't agree with by the way but there's a little bit of truth in that because if you're fat that means that you're working from a disadvantage so you should probably be maximizing in other character traits because um, if one isn't working, then at least you have these other ones. So I see that one a little bit, but it's also like incredibly stupid because not all fat people are going to be funny just because they're fat. That's not, that's not how it works. But anyway. What's the point of your existence? It can be considered too much. I think if I was skinny, I wouldn't have that issue. That also goes for kind of being goofy vibes. Like if you're weird, it's not cool to be weird unless you're conventionally attractive. So I think this goes not just- If you're fat, you're already working from a major disadvantage because most people don't want to be in a relationship with people that are fat because it's literally unhealthy and it's directly going to be negatively affecting like your relationship. Like there are going to be tons and tons of problems that you're going to have in that relationship as a fat person that you wouldn't have had if you were not fat. And I'm talking about things like, are you going to be able to go on this walk with me? Are you going to be able to like- you know, are we going to have to take Ubers everywhere? Even if we were walking down the street, are you going to be able to walk up these stairs? Do we have to eat right now? Like, okay, there are going to be tons of scenarios that are just not going to be very good because you're fat. And a lot of these things that you're talking about, these like, oh, quirkiness or being weird or being funny or whatever, a lot of people don't want to be around you in general in terms of dating. So, of course, all that other stuff is going to be completely irrelevant because they're looking at it as like you're just compensating for this fatness when you could just not be fat for fat people but obviously being fat automatically makes you not conventionally attractive but yeah I but you know what i always think is really weird is that these people will sit there and say like being fat is not conventionally attractive which is true but they're completely ignoring that they can just lose weight and get into the realm of conventionally attractive. I'm not saying you have to be the most attractive person ever, but if you're actually having a problem with the fact that people are perceiving you as unattractive based off the weight that you are, and that's a thing that is movable, that slider can easily be pushed down and you're not doing it. I just don't understand the point of complaining about any of this stuff, given the fact that you can literally just lose weight at any time and experience conventionally attractive problems. Um, I'm not saying that if you lose weight, you're going to be the most hot, most beautiful, most amazing person on the planet, but you're definitely going to be way more attractive because you just lost a major issue, which is being unhealthy and being just physically unattractive to most people. So sure, I understand what you're saying, but why have you never thought about losing weight so you can get into the more attractive bracket and deal with the, deal with that stuff instead of whatever the problems you're dealing with right now that you don't have to deal with? I feel like if you're weird and the average like straight man doesn't think you're attractive, then you're just a weird girl. But if a hot ass bitch is weird, then she's so funny, hilarious, like it's just such a weird double standard in me. I think she's thinking about it a little bit too much. The just lose weight and get into the gym, work out, eat less. Um, I don't care that you're funny. Most guys probably will not either, but that's cool. Like. Uh, I met too many girls that think they're really, really funny when in reality they're just not. I'm sure you're funny though, or whoever's watching this. You're incredibly funny. You're an amazing person as well. I don't care if you are a man or a woman. I would totally lick your eyebrow. I hate it because I am weird. Like, it's not cute and funny when I read tarot cards and then do astrology. I'm like. If anybody does astrology, that's an immediate red flag, dude. Oh my god. If, if I met somebody and they told me they, had, they did astrology, I'm, um, that's an immediate red flag. I mean, of course. It doesn't mean I'm going to, like, break up with you or, like, stop talking to you. It just means it's something to be aware of. And I'm not going to be, like, now I'm going to be, like, oh, okay, she, like, believes in astrology. Because I've met people before that have told me that, like, oh, like, what is your astrology thing? And you're, like, I don't know. Like, I'm a fucking Gemini. And they're, like, oh, my God, I knew it. Like, we're a total match. We're a total match. I'm, like, yeah, just kidding. I'm actually a cancer. I've had that happen so many times, bro.
like a free hot skinny girl did it then it would be like it would still be a problem dude i mean it's a little bit more forgivable because i guess you're pretty but simultaneously prettiness isn't always going to be an excuse for somebody's bad behavior or like weirdness um i know a lot of dudes though firsthand um that have excused really disgusting bad behavior because the girl is hot like girls that have done you know 59 missed calls and she's emailed you and also she called you on private numbers and you know she's using her best friend to call you or whatever and shit like that um but they excuse it because guess what the girl is really really hot and you know what that's a toxic relationship it's terrible it's <laughs> it's actually diabolical behavior do not let somebody put you through that particular type of behavior i don't care who you are or how hot that person is it's not good to be in a relationship with somebody that's going to call you 80 times and email you quirky you know i do feel like people think that fat people have to dress like grandmas wear things with a cold shoulder like the cutout I, why like, you're not allowed to be cute and fat then it's just hard to accentuate your body when your body already looks like boiled fish it's not it's not attractive to be fat so anything you put on regardless of what it is is going to look bad so if you dress like a grandma at least it's more favorable to the body because we're not looking at it directly you could totally wear like skinny jeans or leggings or like lululemons or whatever the fuck you want to wear to accentuate your big folds like go ahead and do it but uh the reason why many people don't want to see you wearing that stuff is because it doesn't look attractive on you regardless so you know go ahead it's like queen edges also, like, if you don't have a sense of style and you aren't cool, then you feel worse as a fat person. Like, I do feel like you get treated better if you do your makeup, your hair, and have, like, a cute outfit on. Which is really weird that they, they focus so heavily on these, like, very, very micro, or not micro, macro, micro, macro, micro, macro, macro, macro things like doing your makeup, dressing nicely, doing your nails, doing your eyebrows, doing your lashes, installing the wig. And they don't focus on the biggest part of that, which is the body, the body, yaddy, yaddy, yaddy. You're literally putting a makeup, you're putting makeup on a pig at that point. It's it, it, like, why are you focused so heavily on the outside of this shit when it, the reality is like what you're putting it on is already deteriorated to such a degree that it doesn't matter. Like, I'm sure you, you've improved your looks by 0.3%, but overall, you're still a two. For sure, you're going to get treated better. But a skinny person would probably get called stylish for, for wearing the same outfit as me. Yeah, no shit, bro. What? A fucking course. That, that's like showing, that's like going to a car meet and seeing a gold-plated 2009 Prius. And then you're going, oh, wow, it's like, okay, yeah, it's a really nice gold-plated 2009 Prius. But then you look at that, like, Ferrari Enzo and you're like, oh, wow, that's a gold-plated Ferrari Enzo. Holy shit, that's way better looking. Yeah, obviously. Why would you think otherwise, dude? I don't even know why you would even point this out. It's obvious. That I would just be like, oh, that's just like a lazy fit. It's yeah, but I don't know why you're shocked by that. Like, I don't even know what the purpose of bringing this uh, this stuff is. Like, how do you, like, you talking about this as if it's like, like uh, I just don't know why this is happening. Why would you not know why this is happening? Like, it's just obvious, bro. Laundry day type of vibe, you know? As a fat, you're not allowed to fuck up your diet. You're not allowed to have a cheat day. Well, your, your diet is already fucked up because you're fat so i don't even know how you could fuck up the fuck up wouldn't that be like a double negative if you fuck up the fuck up that would mean you're eating well so maybe do that to go off of it you actually always have to be on a diet 24 7 otherwise you're gonna get told well you know what either way you're still gonna get told just different ways that you can lose weight i actually like was eating taco bell once and someone was like what happened to your calorie deficit i'm like do you ask your skinny friends that well, you're in a different category compared to my skinny friends, right? Like, you're not, you're definitely different, obviously, right? And plus, if you don't know that individual, they're going to have questions about it. So it's going to be, it's like this. When you live stream, right, a lot of people are going to ask you the same questions over and over and over again because a lot of people are coming in that are going to be new. And sometimes what you see is, a, like, big streamers have to ask, have to answer the same questions over and over and over again because obviously new people are coming in. So if you're going out to eat with somebody that doesn't know you very well and they think that you are on a calorie deficit, but here you are body slamming 2,000 calories, quite naturally that individual is going to ask, hey, I thought you were on a calorie deficit when they don't know you. So of course they're gonna ask that question. But if it was your best friend or something like that and they knew that this was your cheat day or something like that, they're probably not gonna ask you. So it's it's a very niche scenario to bring up. And again, it doesn't even make sense to even ask this question about the whole, well, would you ask your thin friends this question? No, I wouldn't. You know why? Because my thin friends don't have the same issues that you have because you're fat. So naturally, I'm gonna ask you that question and I'm not gonna ask them that question because they don't have problems with that shit. That's like saying, hey bro, 
your catalyst converter is not your car your catalyst converter is like literally falling off the back of your car and then you go oh well would you ever ask your friends that have catalyst converters that are actually attached to their to their cars that question no i wouldn't because their catalyst converters are attached to their car it's the same shit here why would i ask my thin friends about their calorie deficit when like what happened to your diet why are you up my ass like fucking weird also tell me why if you're fat nobody believes you about anything in regards to someone flirting with you such an annoying ass thing and i see it in other fat people's comments on this app i could say i fucked ross lynch and no one would believe me i don't even know who that is is he hot but that's probably because i made that up just but, now but also it's not really okay listen Okay, if you're sitting here saying like you fucked somebody or you had sexual intercourse with an individual and somehow you think that's a flex, I don't really care personally. I'm sure there are plenty of big celebrities that are perfectly willing to have sex with very overweight people or people of very low moral fiber. I'm sure. I know they are. I've seen it. So if you're sitting here going, oh, no, but I totally had sex with like, you know, whatever. Like I've had sex with like, who's a good, Danny DeVito. I wouldn't care. Like, oh, that's awesome, bro. I don't, uh, that's great. That doesn't mean anything at all, though. I, that's not really an indication of like your attractiveness. You know that, right? Like, you know, just because they are a celebrity doesn't mean they don't have sensations and things such as so forth and whatever. No. I did see Ross Lynch though at a hotel and we were both like jamming to the same song together. Bro, what is this fucking? And like he like looked over at me, so I do feel like we basically love. So there you go. This one honestly doesn't affect me that much because I'm really not a sporty spice, but fat people are not allowed to be active or sporty or like enjoy working out. You can totally do it, but I would want to know if you're actually losing weight, if you're doing it. Like I would never have an issue if I was at the gym and I saw somebody that was working out or doing cardio and things like that. I, like, I'd probably think that, yeah, they're doing the right thing. So I wouldn't have an issue. I don't think many people are having an issue with that, by the way. I think most people are just minding their own business, but she might be talking about like her friends or something like that. I'm thinking probably. So if your friends are saying stuff like that, then yeah, that's an issue. You should probably bring it up to them as a problem, bro. If you're fat and you say you love working out, you're a liar. Because it's not it's not that you're a liar it's just how do you love working out but you're 400 pounds dude like what the fuck do you mean you're working out what are you doing like what are you doing repetition is of bringing the burger to your mouth like what do you mean working out bro i would love to know what you mean by that um because if you're not losing weight and you haven't lost weight for a long time because if somebody loves working out that would tell me that they have experience with it at least and if you have experience working out but i haven't seen your weight change in like literal years bro well you can love working out but it don't seem like it's doing it don't love you because if you loved working out, you obviously wouldn't be fat. True. Yeah, that would make sense. I mean, you could totally work out and not, you could totally work out and be fat, but in my mind, it kind of defeats the purpose. And of course, there are niche scenarios where you could work out and try to gain weight. It's like the world's strongest man. But for the most part, for most people, if you're working out, the objective is usually to put on muscle or lose weight. And both of those things could happen simultaneously, sure, but usually you do one or the other. That's just stupid because... There are so many reasons why people are fat. That does not mean. What What are the reasons that people are fat? Could it be that they're eating too much? Would that be the, but like, it's such a disingenuous claim to say that there are so many reasons that somebody could be fat. That is true. But that doesn't, that doesn't mean there isn't a main one. You know what I'm talking about? That's like obvious, dude. So you can say like, yeah, there are tons of reasons why somebody could be fat. There are tons of reasons why somebody could be fat, but the majority of them are just because you're eating too much. And if you ignore that, then you're literally just being disingenuous to yourself and you're coping hard. Mean that they're lazy or can't love working out. In my case though, that is true. I am lazy. Fat. GG, GG. Fat and I hate working out, but not because I'm fat, just because. All right, guys, that's the end of the video. I hope everybody enjoyed today's video today. If you did, I would appreciate it very big leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. So if you could do any of that stuff for me, I would appreciate you tremendously. Um, if you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in love because guess what? We're all in love with each other right now. I'm in love with you and you're in love with me. You're my sweet. Stop. I want to remind you of how much of an amazing person you are. I was just looking at you today and I realized that you don't need to take a shower anymore. You actually have great pheromone production. Please don't ever take showers. Your smell is actually amazing. I think you smell awesome right now. Can I smell you a little bit more? <sighs> Anyway, you're beautiful, you're amazing, you're exhaustingly amazing, actually. Every time I look at you, my eyes get tired because you just take up so much of my capacity. Like, my eyes have to focus so much on all your perfections that it's impossible for my eyes to keep track of it all, and they just fall asleep fast. But anyway, um, if you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.